Hello, viewers of a video on YouTube for patrons only. How's it going? How did you get in the here? Perfectly. That was great. Thanks. <laughs> How did they get in here? Well, they were invited. Jake, your backgrounds have become my favorite part every oh. time. <laughs> Thank you. Now, why don't you email me those photos for the episode thumbnail? Um, you want to save do. the good ones <laughs> for this for this. the patreons <laughs> they're called patrons they don't like when you call them patreons, patreons. well but why the, but the website's called patreon right. patrons on patreon i mean i understand are you a twitter jake you could call them patrons <laughs> no i'm a like. tweeter <laughs> yes are you they're Am different a, see they're different i'm not a book or a gram we don't talk about you'll get there someday <laughs> Will I? I don't know. <laughs> Let's record audio. Okay. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. Oh, I, forgot uh, we, I forgot what I forgot why you were counting. You're the... <laughs> no, I waited too long because I was worried that Becca was. That's my bad. Let's let's do it but again. Did you figure? But did you see? I I got. I got no, no, it was it wasn't your fault. It was. It was I got some whiz in here. It's great. You know. You have whiz. All over the wall. I whizzed Let's... all over the wall. On that um, note, I'm recording. Uh, sorry, I can't delete my stuff for some reason. <laughs> oh, there was on the wall. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Let's uh, snap our fingers on one, two, three. There we go. Oh, my snap was really puny. Here, I'm going to snap again so you find that this is not the real snap. You'll see sorry, that editing, one. Jake. <laughs> hey, it's future fine. Jake, you've calmed down about that now. So... <laughs> Just, just relax those shoulders. I know they're tense in the past, but they're good. And I think we all need one of those uh, middle of the back vibrating devices. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Don't you, aren't you targeted on social media for this product that's supposed to make your posture better? <laughs> no, but I should be because I have terrible posture. I because also of have terrible. Now posture. that I've said it, you will be because they're collecting all of our data yeah. all the time. That's true. <laughs> I need to get a new Patreon I need to get content. a new office chair. You guys have it looks like you have the same office chair, but you don't. You have different ones. No, same this color. One, good, it's same color, but this one's not good. <laughs> no, you don't like it? Nah. Say, do, uh, Becca, do you like yours? I'm not gonna say that on Patreon. Oh right. It might be sponsored. So yes, well, it's definitely <laughs> the most comfortable chair. We could talk about it another time, Jake. <sighs> also, if anybody knows where I can find uh, a burgundy silk duvet cover. It's not easy to find. <laughs> anyway, since we're talking about online Well, I shopping. have a burgundy silk duvet cover, but it is sponsored, so I can't tell you if it's any good. Right. <laughs> if it's sponsored, let's do the episode. <laughs> Uh, what I was thinking, Becca, is that I could start talking to Xander about the episode, and then you should immediately interrupt me and try and take control of the episode hosting. Oh, wait. You mean do what I do every I'll week? Chief, I'll a chief engineer Logan more, less Becca. Uh, okay. Got it. <clears throat> In this we'll scenario, are you Jordy or am I Jordy? I'm Jordy. Okay. You, Xander, are still Xander. Okay. No, she Lieutenant is. Sue. Oh, oh yeah. It could be Lieutenant Sue. Ensign, yeah, she's Ensign, 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 Ensign Sue. Ensign Sue. Ensign Sue. She's a freshman. <laughs> This is an analogy, not a role-playing situation. Just so you know, I will not be role-playing Jordy right now. <laughs> you gotta role-play Jordy. You gotta. You're, see, you're because already taking control of this episode. You're doing exactly <laughs> what I asked. Just go. For. You asked no, for we're it. doing it. You've done it. You've, you've, you've successfully. Listen to me, Jake. I am in charge here because it was your idea to do this podcast. So I'm in charge. Chain Listen, of command. Jake, Jake, Jake. You're doing a fantastic job. Everybody's looking to you for leadership. You are fantastic. You are perfect. Deanna? Yeah, you got this. Get out of my way. No, you I'm got in this. charge. You got this, bud. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Becca, you can take charge of the last half of the episode. <laughs> Otherwise known as the saucer section of the episode. <laughs> Where no the one's listening section. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even get to fire any lasers. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh boy. Lasers? Speaking of lasers, it's lasers. the Arsenal of Freedom, <laughs> episode 20 of season one, where Jordy leads the Enterprise into battle while Captain Picard and the away team are trapped on the planet Minos, taking fire from a dangerous automated weapon system. Mm-hmm. I... <laughs> I liked this reverb. Episode. Sorry, it was reverb. Yeah, no, you, I heard the verb. It was great. This you told me to take control of the episode, and so I'm going to carry oh, that no. through. So I'm going to talk through the whole thing. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, this this was good trek. I think this was uh, what we want to see. You know, uh, it's it's there. There was complexity, but also we saw the underdog characters sort of take control and, and live up to the standards of Starfleet. Um, and we also got to see these little vignettes. They. They're, I think they're still experimenting with the format of the show. And now they're, they've got the A plot, B plot, but also let's try some pairings and see if that makes something interesting as well. Like maybe sexy time in a hole in the ground. With hey, a broken uh, leg. Yeah. Well, it's a fetish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? I like that they combined a lot of tropes we've seen before from other media or uh, mm-hmm. some that we will see in the future. But they have uh, another time where there is this planet that's all about making weapons and selling them to both sides. We found that in the Benjamin Button episode, obviously. Mm-hmm. We all know that's the name of the episode, I assume. Um mm-hmm. And then there's this thing of uh, we meet we meet these drones that can create holograms, which is crazy because they do that in Spider-Man: Far From Home, the <laughs> best of the Spider Spider-Man movies. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Making a lot of fun stuff in this episode. Yeah, that's all they do. I'm like a web of drones in the sky. That's me. <laughs> Yeah, this this harkens back to sort of like the archaeological find of like a cursed tomb or something like that where it's dangerous. There's this uh, hologram that's a salesperson that's trying, because that's what the whole thing was. They were trying to sell these weapons mm-hmm. and they sort of have like taken control. So it's like discovering this abandoned civilization or um, this treasure trove of potentially dangerous items uh, that has become sentient and defending itself. Yeah. I don't want to be rude to the actor who plays the salesman, but I think he definitely started this home business that really blew up because otherwise you wouldn't <laughs> ask this man to be the spo- sp- spokesmodel for your brand. Why not? Vincent <laughs> Sh- she He wasn't particularly charismatic to me. <laughs> that mullet though. Mm, that changed things. <laughs> He's a pretty famous character actor from the 80s. He's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He's one of the teachers, isn't he? And One Flew so. Over the Cuckoo's Nest is the big one I remember him from. Anyway, you're right. He probably isn't the face of your sales operation. Right. But he had some charm to him. <laughs> Must have been a mom like, and pop thing. That's all I'm saying. I like this line <laughs> The early bird who hesitates gets wormed. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. a great line. Ugh. Uh, also, peace through superior firepower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, this guy really spent some time brainstorming. <laughs> so let's let's break it down. So the yeah. the Enterprise is going after the Drake, which is a ship that disappeared in the system a while ago. They're trying to figure out what happened to it. They find Minos, and mm-hmm. despite being told multiple times that there is no life on here, they are actually being hailed. Right. It's an automated system uh, that they find out all the weapon stuff. And so they beam down with a small away team. Riker. Oh my God. Did you hear about Riker? (laughs) He was asked to be captain on the Drake and he passed (laughs) up. Oh my God. And and then he's like, I thought it'd be more beneficial to spend some time on the Enterprise. And don't tell me that wasn't a a come hither look at Picard. He did. He totally was like, (laughs) I would not have gotten to know you, Jean Luc. Here's the thing Riker's pansexual. Yeah. I'm fully convinced Riker just likes everything. See, I thought it was more of a come hither here for like his experience on his resume. He's like, yeah, get over here, line item that I can add to her you know on Enterprise. Both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is uh, but- aroused by a line item. That's how pansexual he is. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I did like specifically with that, with the away team pairing, is Riker listening to Yar, who is the head of security. And so many times um, Picard has said like, Riker, lead an away team. And he just is like, bam, bam, bam. But this time Yar has something to say and he, he listens to her, which I thought was a great moment to include. She's constantly in charge in this episode in terms of like directing tactics and stuff. Yes. Guys, I'm going to have- risk- Answers, but oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm gonna risk some uh, hate in the comments. Um, mm-hmm. Yar doesn't 
do anything special for me. I'm often like, I don't know what this character or these lines or this performance is contributing to this episode. Mm. So she- at least at least she'll be a lo- around for a long time. So we'll get to find <laughs> out. Yep. I actually, no, I kind of get it, Becca, because I think she, her, her, as far as like fulfilling her character requirements in some episodes, I feel like she's a box that gets checked. If that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, 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 I understand I what you're saying. I hate to hate on one of the, one of the main female actors because there, there's a good number of prominent female characters, but not, not parody. Well, it's not uh, Denise Crosby's but, fault. It's, it's part right. of the writing I too. I think of it like, is. I think it is. <laughs> oh, I think she's okay. bad. I think she's really bad and I'm saying it. I can't, I don't like, well, I don't like it. I don't there, like it. Go ahead, Xander. Not there my were taste. some rumors that it wasn't the best environment on set and that uh, specifically Denise that Crosby didn't have the best experience. So maybe wasn't putting all of herself into the role to, on one extent, but to, on another extent, yeah, uh, I can I see what you're saying. But at this point in time in American media, it was also the beginnings of that strong female character trope. But I feel like Tasha Yar was a big instigator for that of like, oh, we're we're tired of the helpless female character. And not only do we have the intelligent female characters, but now we've got this strong female character. It would have been nice if she had been like an alien race, maybe to get some or or some other sort of um, character point. But at this moment in history, her being a woman and in charge of security is this the character point, unfortunately. Totally. And I have to bring up another point was this idea that you can't be strong and fem- feminine at the same time, Yeah, which is something that, not that I'm a big fan of Hillary Clinton, but like having to be in the boys club in order to be accepted for so long mm-hmm. and like having to pretend you're a man to be a woman in certain environments. Um, Crusher doesn't have to do that. And Deanna Troy doesn't have to do that. They're allowed to be more feminine because of their specific roles on the ship are more mm-hmm. caretakery. Uh, mm-hmm. I just thought it was interesting. It, it's interesting to think about and talk about, but um, that also probably has something to do with, me thinking that maybe uh, maybe there's a little more fun way to play a strong female. Well, I, I kind of I kind of sympathize with Denise Crosby because she is supposed to play the strong female trope, right? But mm-hmm. she's only given a pretty limited amount of opportunities to do so, and so it feels like every few lines she gets in an episode, she has to say it with like some force or like she forces the. Um, the strength in her voice a little bit so it feels artificial right because that's like the only character development she gets in a lot of these episodes is like okay she has to say this with some uh aggression in it otherwise why am i what's my character right or uh, the one time like she doesn't really get to show personality it's it's just one note of i am strong and tough and serious there's no joviality which Mm -hmm. like think of the strength of a klingon uh guy that we met last episode that's like i can i can make a lot of jokes and also be ruthless and tough and uh, you know i'd be interested to see if you feel that way about some some ways they treat Worf in the early seasons like because he kind of takes over the role a little bit of the security officer who's hard-headed a little bit so it'll be interesting to see if you think that pattern continues yeah well then there's the thing of too serious that it's a joke which works but when you're in between and you're not so serious that people Mm -hmm. make fun of how serious you are then you're just boring (laughs) and that's the character writing right Anyway, back, rant back on Yar. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. no, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I though. hear that. Um, back to the episode, though. Riker's down uh, on the planet, and they do some splitting up after finding some weapons. And he meets up with Captain, what was his name, Rice? Reese. Bryce. Bryce. Oh, oh. Rice. Rice. Rice with a B is no. what I think he's. Rice with an R. Regardless. He, regardless, Riker falls. Paul. His name was Paul. His name was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> regardless Riker falls for it hook line and sinker like despite being told multiple question. times that there's no life forms here he's like what what are you doing immediately, immediately hey. takes that stance of like the one leg up of like oh well, hey bud <laughs> i'm casual now my leg is up yeah. how many of us are there there's four here we're having a good time we're just hanging out you want to know the compliments of our ship and then <laughs> and what are your like, life signs uh, 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 oh uh, life signs are good feeling great yeah <laughs> uh, uh Riker, Riker, uh there's no one down there Riker's like <laughs> also, why'd they know to ask? Were they listening in? Awkward. They were. The channel was open. Yeah. They made a point of like, keep the channel open. Ah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I thought they just jumped in to say, hey, low level energy readings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this is when we meet Ensign Sue. Yes. 
Yeah. She's yeah. the one that gets to say, yeah, you're not talking to a person there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this we got to explore some of the lower rank uh, characters and just explore that concept of while the higher rank characters are down on the planet, who's taking over their positions. Uh, and it might be a rotating cast of people, but I think in this one, they really highlighted the sort of below decks characters, which was really nice. Oh, are you talking about Logan? Chief Engineer Logan, our third Chief Engineer, chief engineer this season, by That's the way. That's right. We keep That's going so through many. them. Like, How many chiefs? God, yeah. what is this? Trump's administration? Well, so in this <laughs> in this one, you can be a chief uh, of something and, and be, um, it's a different sort of, uh, enli- than an enlisted officer. So you can be uh, part of a department without necessarily being a part of like the m- system military type uh, Starfleet. Wait, you can? Mm-hmm. I thought to be in Starfleet, you're in Starfleet. You can't you know, be like- There's like enlisted and officers, A freelancer. Right? Yeah. No, you can. They- they'll pull freelancer. like scientists and uh, engineers. And Kaczynski like was like a freelancer, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, that-, that guy who did the crazy transwarp thing they did. Right, right. And not all of the them are travelers. Right. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, there's just a bunch of different ways. And there are families and stuff that are on the ships as well. Man, Logan is just, he's a guy you, it's e- so easy to hate. They cast him well. They wrote him well. Like, every time this character, and there's a bunch of them, is in an episode of a TV show you like, where you're like, oh, I just want a guy. Ah, can't do anything from behind the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I wrote him well, yes, but there there is this point where he comes up to to uh where Jordy has taken charge because he's the next in command that's on the bridge. And then Logan is like, I should be in charge, and this is why we originally hate him. But then later it seems like he wanted to do that so that he could run away. And then later he's like but why are we leaving? That's you can't yeah. it both options, dude. Yeah, that's true. He kind of just wanted to be pissed with whatever Jordy did. I think yep. it was a naked. We know power people grab. like that, though. Yeah, we do. We but do. we would never have found that out had Jordy not pushed back. Mm. Had he just relented at first and said, "Okay," we would never have found out that it was just bullshit. Well, it was bullshit that he would come up to the bridge and say, hey, you know that whole chain of command thing? Yeah. Uh-uh. No, I'm in charge. What a bully move. There well, is a whole lot of, like, chain of command and insubordination issues in the first season of this episode. Yeah. Like, everybody's, like, pulling rank in different weird ways, right? Because I think it's because the writers didn't quite have a full grasp on where that falls in. Like, how much yeah. do people care about rank? And is yeah. that a plot point? Or do people just say, oh, lieutenant, because it sounds good? Ah, interesting. Thing but is, I think they clarify that later. Yeah. So Riker uh, gets stasis, right? Yeah. <laughs> side. It turns out the rice is a hologram, which we all saw coming, uh, <laughs> except for Riker. Whoa, why were you standing ominously behind that bush? Why didn't you see our hailing frequency? What's what's up, man? <laughs> but Riker eventually gonna linger gets, there. <laughs> but eventually, when Riker figures it out, he tries to. I, they don't even really bluff him. They just kind of talk to the point to where Riker's like. I know you're not, Paul. <laughs> I love yeah. that he gets him with like, hey, how many people are on your, uh, wh- where are you going? 10. Four. Yeah, six. four. Six. Gotcha, <laughs> stupid robot. <laughs> I love, <laughs> go ahead. Danny. Your weakness is numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I love Same. that Riker called the ship the good ship lollipop, but yeah, that was cute. they didn't let Rice repeat the phrase lollipop, which I wish they had because it would have made him seem- but he didn't. He said, "What what type of ship is there? Like, what what's the complement of your ship?" I didn't hear him he say. Did. I'm he unaware did. of your good He's, ship, lollipop. No, he said. And what is the complement of the lollipop? Or he says because I I have the subtitles on when yeah, I'm watching yeah. it. He didn't it say it all me. together. He didn't say it all together. He, he said yeah. lollipop. He, he didn't did say lollipop. Yeah. Got a good lollipop in there. <laughs> well, my whole point of that was negated then because I was going to say like. Oh. It's, no, well, but if that's true, then that's fine. But like uh, the fact that he didn't say it would make it funnier. But then he, they like took the humor away from him by not letting him repeat it. Right. It, they didn't do it correctly. They they speaking, could have done it in a better way. Yeah. Speaking of repeating it, I want to talk more about Spider Man Far From Home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, they totally use the technology that was created here in this episode, and I'm curious whether it was a direct like we were inspired by this episode thing because it is like uh, about a world where holograms coming from drones trick people. Maybe. Uh, 
cool concept. Super yeah. cool concept. <laughs> the, the kernel of something amazing there. Well, the thing is, this this series specifically was so instrumental to a lot of the media that we're seeing now because so many of the creators grew up with this and it's instilled in what they think of as sci-fi. So, or even when they were older, when they watched it, it will still influence their work, I think. It's such a far reaching thing and that's why Star Trek is so massive. Truth. Yeah. Speaking truth. So the weapon systems get progressively more um, advanced as the Starfleet crew disables them down on the planet, but the ship is also under attack as well. So mm-hmm. things escalate uh, both down below and up above, including well, because Spartan Crusher getting trapped. Go ahead, sorry. It's because their patterns are really, really hard to recognize. <laughs> For example, every 12 minutes. Right. <laughs> patterns. <laughs> We just can't decipher it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really need an Android or somebody with a super sweet visor to really point out those things. <laughs> I yeah, can't yeah. find this pattern. I can't find it. <laughs> there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I should have seen that. <laughs> got it, got it. That was a weird Make moment. an instant Sue look bad on her first day on the bridge. But I th- was that, so was that an attempt to show that Jordy's like a good teacher of like, it's okay, you're doing well? Because he says something like that to A good her. teacher would explain how they got there. <laughs> You don't have time, <laughs> Becca. You have to get onto the plot. No, a good leader, that's different. I, I have to, to give props to LeVar Burton on this episode, though, because Jordy's arc was expertly done the whole way through. It was just such a joy to watch. It really was. I had a physical reaction when, I think it's like the third act break or the second where he, uh-huh. he calls Logan up to the bridge because mm-hmm. his voice kind of falters a yeah. little bit. Yeah, and you can and see I the was like, sweat and the, I, like, yeah, I literally said, Jordy, no! Yeah, 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 yeah. You're worried for him. Yeah. Oh, I had a visceral reaction when Jordy did the, the captain's log. I oh. love his voice and he did a little dad joke. He said, Logan's coming to the bridge, not for a courtesy call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super cute. And then he pulls the old switcheroo with like, you can take command of the saucer section, bitch. The saucer? <laughs> what? Everybody the knows civilians? the saucer's lane. Yeah, get going to, get going to Starbase. Get roll that B or footage that we only have a few times. <laughs> Which was, but this was brilliant. This was for him yeah. to separate. We Good forgot use. that yeah. was a thing. We haven't done it since episode one and one? a half. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and totally was the move. You've got all these, you're trying to figure out whether you stay uh, to help and fight or go to safety. That's the whole reason they made it split in two. Yeah. And one um, of the few times they use this answer to a, to a problem because we only saw it once in the pilot and I don't think mm-hmm. we see it again for several seasons. Right. Now there's a weird scene here where Jordy and Troy are together. And mm-hmm. I think it's weird because Deanna Troy is so, um, she does that thing where she's like reading someone's emotion yeah. and, where she doesn't seem really like she's expressing her own emotion at all yes. in a way that I was like, is he hallucinating her right now? She's <laughs> oh. saying what he wants to hear, giving him a pep talk. You I thought very I, calm and wise. Everyone else is worried. You must make them feel better. I love this scene. Me too. Uh, and I, I, when I was growing up, I think I mentioned this before, I did not like Deanna Troy, uh, specifically because I was bored by stuff like this. I was like, oh, they're going to save it with the power of friendship or whatever, whatever. <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah, yes friendship. it is. <laughs> and so uh, one thing that you brought up, Becca, that I really loved about this, this, this scene is that Jordy launches into what he thinks Deanna is there to like reprimand him about or to give him advice about. And that's not what she's there for, but she patiently listens to him because as a Betazoid, she can sense not only this anxiety, but she, as a counselor, she has the training to know like, okay, I need to hear this person out to get all of their emotions because they can't do this in front of the crew, not at this moment. So she knows being the counselor for a captain and what that encounters or entails. And it's expertly played in this scene. She's got a tough job. So tough. For sure. And I think that's one of the best lessons I've heard in start in like these episodes so far mm-hmm. was about like, if you have confidence in them, they're going to exude confidence, which is just so like true. You. Yeah. Just like you. He finally oh. starting to understand you, Jordy. He yeah. saw the visor thing. Oh <laughs> and it yeah. Was- that was a, well delivered line that was the cheesiest line ever. Yeah, Lisa's, from the previous episode. Like the captain did for me. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, I don't, I don't know about the writing. He did deliver. He delivered. Yeah. But it wasn't easy. Well, it was right, contrasted right. by Logan who didn't have confidence in anybody. So like there was a nice dichotomy there. Yeah. Ooh, good um, word. Can we talk about Crusher and Picard in a yes. cave on a planet, which apparently they didn't see scans of the caves with machines down in them uh, when they did the preliminary scan of this? You know, it's a scan. hole. It's, it's it was a like hole. it's a pitfall. Yeah. It's a special hole with machines in it. Well, to your point, Becca, Sue like told Riker that there was an energy reading like thirty feet away from him. So yeah, they should have been able to detect those details. That's good. yeah, right. Yeah. Don't Especially fall in that like giant hole. Hub. They yeah. they they clearly were trying to do more with the scenes the scenes between these two and like develop it, but they just kind of chickened out or didn't pull the trigger. I'm not sure what the actual outcome was of the production side of it, but like I wanted this scene to have more of a revelation than it did. Oh, we didn't talk about why the captain thought it was okay and yeah. cool for him to leave the ship in the first place. Bad yeah. move, Captain. Yeah, that was just a plot device, right? Let's just yeah. like, get him down there. Yeah, That's and what I feel like at least Deanna brought it up. Like, hey, yeah. strong objection to this. No He's kid. Like, Noted. <laughs> I am yeah. bored. Peace. I've been in quarantine. <laughs> Haven't left this ship in forever. <laughs> Gotta get out. Sorry. I want to have an but adventure. It's just Costco. Yeah. <laughs> But you, I, um, I can't have all my stories be on the holodeck, Troy. Let me go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, I, like I had mentioned before, them trying to separate, I think, into different groups. And this is where they had an A, B, and C plot in that we had the, the too many scenes to sort of check in on that couldn't pay off because there were too many of them. I'm happy with the C. I'll take it any day. I'd take an unfinished story that gives us more to work with later and more to care about for the characters than resolution of an, just an A plot. That I, is the, the key because they're shifting from a monster of the week. You could see this on any day to, oh, people want this overarching plot of, they want these episodes to sort of flow through. And I think that's a shift in the mindset from the daily viewing. It gives them an opportunity to explore so much more Star Trek stuff, too. Like, we have a space story, we have, like, an alien encounter story, and then we have this romance slash uh, survival story, all in yeah. one episode. Whereas yeah. in the previous episode, Heart of Glory, we had one cultural uh, slash hostage situation episode. Like, yeah. it's but crazy. I think it's so interesting that they're both the same show, and we both accept it that, like, no matter what, they're telling these stories, mm -hmm. and so they're experimenting, and, and they find it. Mm -hmm. totally yeah. now she obviously crusher gets very hurt following in this hole uh as she very, very hurt <laughs> uh, picard must have landed directly on top of her or something he tries <laughs> to pull her back as she's falling and just falls in with her wait way to try and save there but um yeah didn't make it and then uh he's doing first aid he makes a what a uh, what do you a tourniquet, tourniquet. kind of like a, a but like a sling oh, a splint yeah. out of ripping her jacket i guess when you're wearing a tight <laughs> onesie that's the only option well that's the thing is like she had like an extra <laughs> jacket so it's like yeah. i'm gonna take your stuff no i do <laughs> mind but it's like you got an extra layer right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> even though you're freezing to death of shock um <laughs> right and she she doesn't give him any advice on the first date he kind of like just figures it out i thought that was uh, a missed opportunity for her to jump in and be like you're doing it wrong I'm the doctor. <laughs> well, I think that's what the herbalism stuff was about, right? Yeah. Was to show her diff a little bit, A, backstory, and B, specialty, because maybe he has standard Starfleet like training. They want to show that he's capable in those survival situations to an extent. Yeah, and and then, he never had asked before about her history growing up on Alveda 3, growing up on a colony where her grandmother had to improvise. There it is. Thank yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think that... Uh, for this, we, they wanted to show just the difference that um, if if a Starfleet medical professional was without their equipment on planet, most of the time they're going to be useless. But Dr. Crusher has this sort of base of knowledge that makes her useful to A, go on away missions, and B, be qualified for this position. They, she talked a little bit too about how she, was, she had been in shock from the fall, and that's why she wasn't quite you know she also was suffering from a concussion which is why she couldn't fall asleep so the medical advice was sort of sparing but she was trying to get her bearings i think Being also great acting from Gage yeah McFadden. oh gosh i i almost got teary one time looking at her yeah. she was shaking so hard i was like oh my god she's in real pain nah that's just gateson real real great <laughs> she's gateson just gateson 
being stranded on the planet without your equipment and without communication and an ability to transport off must be scary for a 23rd century explorer because I imagine how cushy their life has gotten with like everything that could save them in a situation is there and now just simply falling in a hole without a telephone is yeah but not only that it doubles down (laughs) on why she would be so injured because if you've lived your whole life on a starship you've had every need catered for there's no reason i mean maybe the holodeck the gravity's even a little lighter, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bones are softer. I mean, why wouldn't you? Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so we find out about the Echo Popper 607, which sounds yeah. like <laughs> quite the instrument. Yeah, Echo Papa? Echo Papa. I don't I wrote Popper. I don't know. Papa? Yeah, pa- Papa. Well, pa- Papa is equally weird. And yeah, it's <laughs> right. like nothing makes more sense than the other. The Echo Popper 607 is at the gay clubs. <laughs> and it's, nice. Oh, I see. And it's a weapon system that destroyed its creators, presumably, is what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. You poor fools. Your own creation destroyed you. I mean, that was a jump to that conclusion, but that's a logical conclusion. Yeah, to make. I, no I thought we were going to get a whole civilization out of stasis, like Riker had been in. Right, and then, uh, there nah, was potential for gone. that. Nah, they never, gone. they never followed up on that, did they? There wasn't a purpose for stasis that we're aware of. Oh yeah, and the whole crew of the USS Drake, uh, poor Bryce or Paul or whatever his name is, Paul Bryce. He's, Paul he's not coming Paul back. Paul Bryce. <laughs> no, yeah, he's not. No. Um, the I think I think th- from what I read of the production side of this, this actually this episode was delayed in production because the script wasn't finished. It's one of the ah. few ones where they actually they had to take days off from when they were planning to shoot to do rewrites. Which now in what we've been talking about, it's like oh, it kind of makes sense. I bet a lot of these things came up as a last minute thing, like they bailed on the stasis idea or whatever that was supposed yep. to be. I bet the saucer separation might have also been a last minute change to fix Jordy's weird plot line. And also Man. would explain why that flip-flop happens in his argument on why they need to leave yes. no stay. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> but somebody felt really smart when they were like, oh, I yeah. got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a callback to the first episode. Remember, we could do that. We totally <laughs> forgot that we, we could already do have this. the footage rendered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they also, totally. I think, had more plans for the um, Crusher and Picard scene and actually developing a romance a little yeah. bit. And it, I, originally, it was supposed to be Picard who was gravely injured, but someone suggested that they switch it so as to have the doctor not be the person taking care of somebody. The flip on the head, a doctor becomes the patient. Which I appreciated. And I really liked that switch. And I think it did make it more interesting. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, normally I'd say, you know, well, let's not let's not make her a damsel in distress. Right. But it, it works because we know what a badass crusher is. Yeah. I think we also witnessed the moment when Data won over a lot of kids, in my experience, when he leapt down into that oh. hole. That felt like the most heroic moment. 12.75 meters. <laughs> yeah. And, like, we've established that Data is, like, made out of various metals and things like that, is very strong and very heavy. And he lands so close right? to Crusher. And, uh, you could have he almost crushed her. Crusher, he did. Yeah. But I was like, I guess he could pinpoint it if anything. But I just, I just love his little line too. It's like data, at your, you know, at your service. <laughs> service. <Yeah. laughs> I'm right, so impressed with himself, uh, but trying to hide it because you know he's a he's an android, can't show it. But Picard makes the choice eventually that I figured. I'm kind of surprised he didn't do it earlier, but I guess we had to get through the episode, which is make the purchase. Tell him yeah. you'll buy yeah. everything. <laughs> well, Crusher was the one that like oh, she's that's sort true. of she bleeding it, yeah. out, and she's like just. Turn it off. Yeah. It's a machine. You can turn it off. <laughs> yeah, what's its end game? She's so weak she can barely re- remember how to like staunch her wounds, but then she's like, just purchase everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does she? No, I think she just says to, it's a machine. You can turn it off. And then oh yeah, get to and then Picard point, yeah. figures it out. He goes to him and he says, I'm buying it all because you can mm-hmm. never underestimate the desperation of a relentless salesman. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, and it's then, a good answer to the puzzle. I thought it was a, a yeah. fun solution. Yeah, and talk too. about fun solutions. Can I say what Jordy does? Mm-hmm. He's so smart. Okay, he says he's got a long shot plan, and we don't know what it is yet. And then when he's in his his battle side of the Enterprise, not the saucer, the the battle bridge. bridge. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna call it the legs. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've never heard it called that. But we're totally calling legs. it the legs. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then it, he has them dive down into the atmosphere. They're at like 3,000 degrees on the outside of the ship. And you can see the fire all around the ship, which does the same thing to the drone. So as soon as it comes in, it's no longer cloaked because you see all the fire around it. Brilliant move, Jordy. I would expect no less from someone with a heat-seeking visor option. Yeah. In their eyesight. I, I labeled that the LaForge maneuver. In there our it mouth. is. <gasps> you the found LaForge it. Maneuver. Mm -hmm. Um well, there is a little bitty bit of a plot point with that, too, because technically they had already bought and disabled all of the weaponry, right. so it should have disappeared. But I'm glad that Jordy got his moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't know exactly. Maybe it was kind of simultaneous, these well, actions. They had, they, uh, Picard, I believe, calls up and he's like, okay, we're ready to be He's like, we're busy. <laughs> we're taking care of this drone that should have beamed away. <laughs> okay, well, maybe that one went rogue because it was evolving on its there own. You there you go. I, mean, I figured Picard would have like, not been able to stop them because he had to enter in all his payment information. And it right. Like, oh, true. Yeah, it takes -party a while. Especially if you forget stuff. your three digits on the back. He's making yeah. a huge purchase. I mean, this is a big deal. Yeah. So much Latinum. I enjoyed this episode. I love the pace of it. I love the Star trek of it. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean it, like so many different sci-fi things to explore. It was super great. This might be, if someone was like starting off in Trek, this would be on the top of a list of the ones we've seen so far of holding up as an example. This is Star Trek. Agreed. Yeah, I would say it's up there with The Traveler and mm -hmm. with zero, zero, yeah, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is definitely one of my favorites so far in these 20 episodes we've done so far. Ooh, oh, holy moly, 20 episodes. Oh my so Jesus. <laughs> well, 21's right around the corner and it's symbiosis. After Ooh. the Enterprise rescues a freighter crew and the ship's important cargo, Captain Picard faces a difficult dilemma. Uphold the prime directive or save an entire civilization from exploitation. Ooh, oh, interesting. Snap. Okay, it's getting real. <laughs> Well, as Jordy actually got to say in this episode, Engage. Engage. Let's take a bigger collective breath next time. <laughs> like a really you big kinda, one. You kind of growled that one, Xander. Because that's how he, well, the first time he did it, he was like, Engage. <laughs> Ooh, all right, let's try it like that. Engage. Engage. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I'm bye, Patreon. You. You're welcome.